What's up, everyone? Hope you guys had an amazing day. Happy Thursday night. All right. So uh, tomorrow, we've got some more news coming out at 8.30 a.m. We've got unemployment change news coming out. And then basically, it's the weekend. So um, we're going to end the week very, very strong. Today was pretty, pretty good in terms of overall trading. But then, you know, um, we had to take a stab at some shorts. So currently, we are holding on to March buy puts. And in the video, I'm going to explain what my thought process is for that play and where I think the market is going to go leading into the next. Hopefully it goes down, but I'm just going to go ahead and give my analysis of what I think is going to happen. All right. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. So the first thing I want to show was the bonds. So the bonds, obviously, they closed above um, the, the major point that I was talking about. And uh, we clearly see that there's some strength here. So the bonds finally caught up to the strength in the stock market. All right. And that makes sense. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about was the dollar. Okay. So the dollar, we know that the, so the bonds have like a correlated, um, you know, if the bonds are going up, then the stock market is also going up. So they work, um, they're very highly correlated, the bonds and the stock market. All right. But the dollar, I also want to take a look at, uh, the dollar has an inverse relationship with the stock market. So if the dollar is going down, that means that the stock market goes up. Okay. So basically to see how much more that the market can go up, we have to see how much more the dollar has to fall down. And one of the things that is basically going to stop a large uh, move downwards is the fact that the dollar is um, getting very close to the lower level of the Bollinger Band. So the lower standard deviation away from the Bollinger Band uh, usually acts as a um, basically a level of support. Like you can't really get that overextended outside before a bounce is to happen. So yes, we did start falling out here, right? But generally, um, this is a good case that the dollar is not going to end up falling very, very sharply outside of the bands. And if we don't fall sharply outside of the bands, because if we fall outside of the bands, then we are technically or algorithmically overextended to the downside. So if we fall outside of the bands like this, then it is a good chance that the dollar should bounce. And if the dollar bounces, then the stock market will fall. Okay. So basically, because this lower band is moving upwards now, you can see that it's, uh, it's basically sharply just increasing here. That means that there is not as much room to the downside on the dollar left in terms of, you know, the um, standard deviation away, right? So basically that is one thing that we can look at to see that there's uh, potentially going to start being some weakness in the stock market. So it could either start once we um, start touching the Bollinger Bands or it can start once we get overextended and uh, get another close. But the fact that the Bollinger Band is starting to increase like this is a good sign for the dollar. Um, get it. It's a good sign that the dollar is going to end up bouncing, potentially. Right. So that's basically just what we have to monitor. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that was that. The other thing was I was quickly just scanning um, all of these large stocks. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to see how so basically, the SPY clearly broke and closed above its uh, prior highs here, right? I'm not going to talk about the SPY right now, but the NASDAQ, it did not, right? The, the NASDAQ didn't really do that. There's not as much strength here. The IWM did not, right? Apple did not. These other stocks that were really leading the rally and everything, they did not really close as much above. Um, level similar to what um, the SPY did, right? So none of these stocks are really showing as much strength. And these are all very, very large stocks and they have a lot to do with the overall market and everything. But what is interesting though, is that stocks like Microsoft did pretty much comfortably close above. Uh, Google did not, Google technically did, but not as much as Microsoft. And um, Meta also similar to 
Google. So basically, it's sort of conflicting. Or basically, uh, is Microsoft, Google, Meta going to pull the rest of the stock market up and these larger uh, tech stocks up? Potentially. But now, when you take a look at the strength on Microsoft, right? Microsoft is coming to a very, very important level of resistance. So the other thing that you could look at is, yes, clearly Microsoft is showing way more strength relative to the other large tech stocks. But Microsoft is also at a very, very important level of uh, daily resistance at 257 and then another one at 261. So is this move to the upside going to sustain itself in Microsoft enough for the other large tech stocks to start following as well? That's, uh, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. So that's basically what I was doing. Um, now we could take a look at the SPY. So basically the reason why I ended up going short is if there was ever going to be a time to try to take a stab at some shorts, it would be right here. So basically, we <laughs> the dollar is starting to show um, signs of a little bounce. The other, basically, like, from a technical standpoint, we had a huge move to the upside here, right? We basically are hovering right at this upper level of the, uh, this rising wedge pattern. If we're going to go short, something for longer term for March, right? That's a few months out. You might as well take it over here instead of completely just like going short into a green candle. Might as well take one that shows a bit of indecision at a upper level of resistance and give it some time, right? So my thought process for that was I would rather be early to shorting um, up here, right? and risk the market go up a bit and um not lose that much money right instead of and say for example tomorrow the market ends up going to like 405 and based off of 405 we're not getting we wouldn't be getting into march puts we would be getting into like much closer dated puts because we're trying to follow the momentum to the downside but then because we had this big move to the upside um getting shorter dated puts after a fall, potentially tomorrow, it has way more chance to get a rip to the upside because then we'd be getting closer to the 50% fib of this uh, move. And then at the 618% fib, it would be even like a much potentially stronger bounce level um, for the market. So if I were going to want to go short, right, it would be over here when there is at least a bit room to fall lower. Because then, if we tried to go short at, for example, you know, once again, if tomorrow, for example, the market ends up falling, even if we try to go short at support, because technically this would become support, obviously, it does not become a much higher quality trade, right? So that's why, if you're going to go short, that's why I decided to just take a stab at some shorts up here. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, um, regardless, we put ourselves in a nice position to make some money. And um, otherwise, if this doesn't work, uh, we're making money every day on scalps regardless. So it's all good. But yeah, uh, there's my thought process for all of that. And um, I would much, once again, I'd rather, much rather go short at resistance than go short at support. That's about it. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you.